clearer version of these new ideas emerged from elsewhere in Europe. Niels Janke is a maths historian from the University of Essen in Germany. So can you tell us a little bit about Leibniz's background? Well, he was uh, born in 1646 and he went to the University of Leipzig in 1661. He was talented in many areas, in philosophy, theology, languages, law and mathematics. And uh, at the age of 20, he was offered a professorship in, at the University of Altdorf, but he refused it and preferred to become a diplomat. And what got him interested in these problems in the first place? Well, it was in a diplomatic mission when he came to Paris in 1672. And uh, in Paris he met Christian Huygens. And Huygens was a famous physicist of his time and also a very, very good mathematician. And Leibniz was eager to learn mathematics from him. And so Huygens posed him problems and he recommended him works uh, he should study by other mathematicians, among them, above all, the works of Pascal. And then, after hard work, he, in 1675, he devised his own algorithm for determining tangents to curves, and he got the insight in the inverse nature between this problem of determining tangents and the problem of the area under a curve. Niels explained Leibniz's insight to me. He built a rectilinear model for analyzing curved lines. So he considered every curved line as a polygon with infinitely many sides, which are infinitely small. So look, for instance, here we have two points, and we connect these two points by line segment. And this line segment is infinitely small, and then, okay, we have here the y-coordinate of the two points. And we get here the x-coordinates. And now, we can't say where the tangent is. A tangent line is simply an extension of this infinitely small segment. So we have here this tangent line. And Leibniz, as others at the time, called this from here to here as a subtangent. And so we have here the ordinate and the x-coordinate. And then for this second point, we have another y-coordinate and x-coordinate. And the difference between these two ordinates is the difference dy. And the difference between the two x-coordinates is the difference dx. So in fact, these are really differences. And now it's completely easy to determine the tangent line. There are two triangles here which are similar. This infinitely small triangle and this finite triangle up here. And so we have the proportion dy by dx is equal to y by t. Nils, what about the area under the curve? Yes, for this problem of the area under the curve, he again applied his rectilinear model. So we have this sequence of points on the curve, infinitely many uh, points, and we have all these coordinates. And then we introduce a function z, a quantity z, and Z designates the area under the curve. And what Leibniz does is to calculate the differential, the difference of this Z. So we have here the X coordinate X and the Y coordinate. And the differential is the difference between the area between the origin and this point minus the area between the origin and this point. And so the differential is a shaded strip. And we have here the difference between these two 
coordinates is dx, and up here we have dy, and d set is exactly this difference between the two areas is exactly this shaded strip. And we can calculate this as dz is equal to y times dx. But by writing this equation, we have neglected this infinitely small triangle up here. But it can be easily shown that it is really infinitely smaller than this rectangle made up of y and dx. So this is correct within this calculus. And now we take the sum over all this dz, and this gives the area. So the sum is simply our z, and this is equal to the sum over all y times dx. And this integral sign here, as we are used to, is derived from the normal s. And so we have derived the fundamental theorem. Leibniz invented the integral sign that's still used today. It's a long stretched s because he saw the process as summing. And in fact he invented also this letter d for the process of taking differences, differentiation, and this comes the name differential calculus. And in fact this notation made it very easy to calculate and so very fast he arrived at rules for differentiation, for instance, the product rule and the quotient rule. And at the same time, he had some communication with Newton and they exchanged their results and they realized that they both were able to uh, derive series for sine, for logarithm and um, other similar results. But Leibniz was very much aware that it was important to publish his results. And therefore, he published his account to the differential calculus in a paper in 1684 in the Acta Eruditorum. This was a journal he had founded together with others some years ago. And he continued publishing other papers in this journal in the years to follow. <laughs>